Hello reformers and welcome back to Expeditions Viking. Now we played this a number of months ago and that was a preview build, beta build, whatever you want to call it. And we now have a full release. So if you'd like to check out Expeditions Viking, which I, I pretty much recommend, it's a very fun game, then the link is in the description. And that will take you to the Steam store page. Anyway, let's go and start a new game right here because no doubt there have been many changes and I'd like to see what they are. So, we are going to be playing as a male, of course, and we're going to be calling ourselves Barney. Yes, Barney Bear Tilt, because that is usually, you know, that is a well-known character on my channel. And if you don't know, it is my original character from Mountain Blade Warband about five years ago. I actually created that series. Anyway, let's have a look and try and get the best portrait ever. I think that, uh, I think this one. I think that one is absolutely fine. What about the eye color? Let's make the eye color gray like the sky. And the complexion? I, I don't know. Let's just do the middle one, I guess. And the hair color? Yeah, the hair color can do that. And okay, so, oh, 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 okay. I didn't even realize that you could actually do this as well. Okay, so we could be large, thin, or medium. Let's be large. Let's have stubble. Yeah, let's have some stubble. Uh, a goatee? Is a goatee good? Yeah. Oh my. Bushiest beard ever. Oh yes. Okay, so I think we probably want to do something like a goatee perhaps. And oh yeah. I like, I'm liking the hair. I'm liking the hair. Let's have an undercut. Why not? Let's have an undercut. And we can have fur lined, tunic, simple, leather. I think I quite like the leather one. Heavy sleeves. Light sleeves. Bare. I don't know, let's go for heavy sleeves. And sandals, wrappings, cloth shoes, boots, sandals. All right, so I think wrappings looks pretty nice. We can change the colors too, which is fantastic. So as you can see, there you go. We can change the colors too. I think I'm gonna go for like a, oh yeah, you can choose pink as well. If you want your Viking to be fabulous, then obviously you can do that. Okay, so we're gonna go for that, I think. And yeah, I think that looks pretty decent, I guess. And then we'll go with that. There's Barney for you. Alright, so what, what are we going to do here? So primary stats. So obviously strength determines base damage with axes and swords and effect, affects physical resistance. Strength is essential for warriors. Yeah, but that's the thing. I don't know what I'm going to be playing with. I mean, uh, I think actually what I'd like to do is I would like to be a persuasive character. So we can have all of our companions and all of our various people that help us. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I guess. But then the one-on-ones, the one-on-one -on -one combat is going to be extremely difficult. Okay, so I'm going to improve my sense. And we'll often reveal additional di information during dialogue. Determines accuracy with ranged weapons. Ah. Oh, okay. Uh, and finesse is important to ranged characters and fast-handed rogues. Okay, so I can reduce endurance and strength. So I, I, it's very Fallout-esque in this respect. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go for this, I think. I'm going to go for that. Because what we're going to do is we're going to either be a person that uses knives and spears. Or someone that uses ranged weaponry. And I think we're go probably going to be using ranged weaponry for the most part. Because as you can see here... Perception is crucial to archers and will often reveal additional di uh, in dialogue, additional information during dialogue. And this is good too, is fundamental to witches, scolds, and other support characters can often be used for persuasion in dialogue. So I very much want to be a persuasive character and we're going to see what that does. Obviously I'm going to be specking in bows, I believe. Yeah, going to be specking into bows a little bit here. So the upgrade cost is nine. Governed by perception. Two-handed range, high damage, medium critical. Yeah, let's do that. So we're going to be gaining bow rank one. Shall I do another? I don't know, really. Okay, I can always downgrade. Look at that. You can always downgrade. So that's pretty nice. So you can just reverse it if you so desire. Bow rank two. What does this do then? Aimed shot. Ooh, aimed shot is fantastic. I'm going to have to upgrade once again for aimed shot. I remember that from the previous builds that I played in and let's have a look what is this offensive skills okay charge cripple dual wielding faint interrupt rebuke throwing stun don't think i need any of those to be honest what are these support skills uh maybe healing would be nice 
Governed by sense. I actually have a pretty high sense. Heal followers during camping and combat. Amount of restored hit points depends on sense and the rank. So that's pretty nice. But I'm looking for things like unlock special dialogue options like diplomacy. See, so there you go. That's what I'd like to go for, perhaps. So is there anything else, though, that I could get that might be pretty good? Uh, dodge. Uh, yeah. Night Owl. Low profile. Uh, that might actually be pretty good. Keen Eye grants 50% armor piercing. Wow, that's insane. Maybe I want to do that. Because it's only 6 upgrade cost. But I'd love to do diplomacy as well. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go for diplomacy as much as I can. And how many is that going to cost? I don't know. Uh, it costs 6. Oh, wow. Okay, so yeah, there you go. I guess that's all I can do. But I could. what I could do is literally just level up. And then improve my bow skills from there. So I think I'm going to... Just downgrade so that we have many more points. And then we're just going to be upgrading our diplomacy. Oh, I'm one point off. Isn't that just grinding your gears when, when you're one point off something? Increases the minimum hit chance on ranged attacks to 10%. No, I don't think I really need that. Removes the penalty to accuracy during the night. That sounds pretty decent. Okay, so I'm going to go for Keen Eye because that looks really, really powerful. Wow, that's pretty good too. Ranged attacks have a 100% critical chance when the target is in melee range. Wow. That's pretty awesome. Well, I'm going to be taking this as well because I only have one skill point left. So, there you go. Oh yeah, by the way, if you didn't want to see that, then there's probably... Uh, there's going to be a, a thing in the, in the comments, isn't there, to skip this whole thing. Uh, but if, for those of you that have actually st stuck around for this, then bravo, I applaud you. So, is that it? Is that all we need to do? Am I, am I missing anything? I don't think I'm missing anything. Let's go. You haven't spent all your skill points. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. I don't mind. Your father was a great warrior and a good husband. But he was not a strong chieftain to his clan. As he travels to join his brothers in the halls of Valhalla, you must take his place. Our clan is beset by petty squabbles. Some amongst our people would contest your claim to leadership, as they saw discord our neighbor's plot against us. Gather your most trusted clansmen. Together you will face dangers which none can predict. You will be challenged on your leadership, your resolve, your wisdom. Build a ship and take your housecarls across the sea. Power and strength for our clan must be sought outside the Norse lands. If you show yourself to be bold, the gods will follow you into battle. Your legacy will live for a thousand years beyond your time. Our clan must prevail. There we have it, and we have arrived after our fa father's funeral, as you can see here. So let us continue onward. When you close your eyes, the image of his blazing ship shimmers in the dark behind your eyelids. It's not a common ritual this far south, but your mother Astrid, who hails from the land of the Geats, insisted on it. Now, I must just mention very quickly here that most of my pronunciation is going to be completely off. So, if you have a problem with that, then I'm terribly sorry, but yeah, that's just how it is. Anyway, all the thanes of the neighboring clans have come to attend your feast in his honor. Your father may not have been the most successful thane, but as a warrior, he commanded the respect of many. The guests are filing into your father's... your longhouse. The thanes enter first, each trailing a modest group of warriors. Your mother leans in to whisper a few words of advice before she takes her seat. You should greet, greet, yes, greet, mm, yes. You should greet each of the thanes before the feast begins, but listen well to their words. Few of them would benefit from making this a smooth transition. It will be important to know where they stand. All right, so characters with golden nameplates have dialogue for you. Click on them, yes. There we go. The icon is, yeah, the quest marker, and these are not mandatory. They are silver. All right, so... These are not mandatory, so I don't need to speak to them, but I suppose I might might want to, I don't know. 
School Skull Cleaver is the Thane of Yelling, which borders your area. Yelling is a large territory and School is one of the most powerful thanes in Jutland, or Yutland. Yelling has prospered under his rule. School pushes himself away from the table with his foot, the chair making a grinding sound across the wooden floor. His face shows earnest sympathy. Barney, my boy, so sorry about your father. If there's anything the people of Yelling can do to aid you in these trying times, don't hesitate to ask. That's very kind of you, Thane School. Of course, we must all stand together against the Frankish threat. Skull leans towards you, resting his elbows on the table. Tell me, what are your plans for this place? How will you lead your clan? Ooh, okay, well, we need a new ship after all, first of all, yes? A subtle smirk twitches under School's thick beard. Of course, you wouldn't want to renege on your clan's duties to King Sigurd. Just take care not to give in to the calling of the sea like your father did. He lets out a deep sigh and leans back into his seat. I'm sure you know I fought with your father many years ago. We were a very we were very much of a similar inclination, he and, I, he and I, yes. That man had a real taste for battle, not like his brothers. Mark my words, Barney. True bonds are forged in battle, not bound in blood. He came to me for advice before he mounted his last journey, on account of my ties to Kalpang. I should have warned him better about what he was getting himself into. Ah. What does Kalpang have to do with it? Vikings out of Kalpang have been to the Isles across the sea. I've heard many stories about it, since I often go there to trade. Your father wanted to hear if the stories were true. Ah, but I've taken too much of your time already. I know you have other guests to entertain. Perhaps we'll talk later, after a bit more mead. Skull nods more to himself than to you and turns his attention to the food on the table. Well, oh, thank you very much. Okay, so, I'm going to speak to Rurik here. Rurik Bertildsen? Wow. Your elder brother, that is really cool. That is actually, <laughs> oh, that is really cool. Okay, your elder brother Rurik always had a penchant for music. He looks up and gives you a warm smile as you approach him. My, uh, yes, I, 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 yeah, my honored Thane, how do you feel? Yes, I, I'm not going to say anything uh, in, in their language because I'm just going to butcher it. All right, I know our father is in Valhalla. Uh, yeah, okay. Rurik smiles, you can barely hear his soft voice over the din of the feast. I'm certain he is. Odin would have to be a fool not to accept a warrior like him. Yeah. If anyone disrespects you, let me know about it. I'll make sure it doesn't happen twice. Everyone knows you are the better warrior, and a stronger-willed man than I. Nobody wants me as their thane. To tell you the truth, I think our clansmen are almost as relieved as I am that you took on the mantle. I have to go and be a good host. Your brother flashes you a cheeky grin. Just use the old signal if you need help to get out of a conversation with one of the other thanes. Aha. Okay, so we can talk to all of the thanes, or we can just talk to Kettle. I... I don't know. I, I guess I guess we'll talk to the, the other thanes here. Ranhild the White is the most influential of your guests. As the vassal of King Sigurd, she is the current ruler of Denmark. She has come from the trade hub of Reba to the south, where she presides as Jarl. She nods politely as you approach her seat. It was a beautiful ceremony, Barney. I extend my condolences for your loss on behalf of Reba and of the king. I must tell you, I advised him not to seek out the isles across the sea. We've all heard the stories of the unprotected coasts and their treasures, but there is more danger than the rumors let on. I'm not surprised they claimed his life, but I am glad at least he died with a sword in his hand. Did you know Bertild well? <laughs> ah, yes. Uh, thank you for accepting the invitation. We are honored that you could make it. Oh, your reputation with Reba has increased by one. Okay. Of course, your father's sword will be missed in our struggles against the Franks. Did you know Bertild well? I knew him as a warrior. We fought together on the Bravillier. Bravili? I don't know. And he struck me as a shrewd tactician. When your king needs you, I hope that you will serve him as well as your father did. I will serve, you have my word. Yeah, there you go. I'm glad to hear it. Our king will not forget those who aid him in battle. There you go. Okay, so let's... Shall we Shall we talk to Nephia? Or... Nah, let's go over to Asleaf because I'm pretty sure we should speak to him. Asleaf is a distant cousin. Leadership of the clan has moved between your side of the family and his for generations. 
He's known as a skilled warrior and a hard worker, as Leif sits with his two closest friends. Our condolences on the passing of your father. At least he died the way he would have wanted. He will be feasting with the gods tonight. Ah, and there's a little bit of extra voice acting here. That's very nice. All right. So, thank you. I hope there is no bla b blad. Ugh. Yeah, if I could read, that would be fantastic. Or speak, should I say. Yes, I hope there is no bad blood between us. Oh, oh, there's no, there's no more, vo oh, no more voice acting. Okay, it's no secret I didn't agree with how Beartil ruled our clan. Bearing this in mind, I don't see what gives you the right to succeed him. But this feast is in his honor, and I will not insult his memory here, nor will I challenge your claim to leadership. Thank you for keeping these things separated. Yeah, there you go. Thank you very much. Thank you for keeping things separate. Okay, so let's talk to Hafton. He's the other thane here. Hafton is the thane of a slightly larger clan that borders your lands to the east. He wears a solemn expression and nods heavily when you approach him. Beartild is in Valhalla now, Barney. There is no doubt about it. He died doing what he loved. But while he feasts among the heroes, you're left back here to sort out the pieces. You've got your work cut out for you. What do you mean? Your father managed to make quite a few enemies in his time. Most of them among his own clan. If you'll permit me to be honest, he never paid one speck of attention to the wishes or needs of his people. Surely you're not expecting your claim to leadership to go uncontested. Ah. Mm, no one in this clan is more suited to lead than I. I'll win them over. Well, shit. Let's hope you're right. At least it's plain for all to see you throw a bloody fine feast. Halfton empties his mug of mead in a single gulp, then slams the mug onto the table and calls to a thrall for a refill. Alright, well there you go. That is it. I think we can probably... I mean, do I want to speak to Keto and Nephia? I mean, they're going to be our companions. Spoilers. Uh, spoiler alert. Uh, Keto is standing off to a side, holding a horn full of mu mead... Mud, I was about to say. The young hunter appears to be watching the feast with a faintly amused expression, and he nods respectfully when you come near. Busy entertaining your guests... Not too busy to check on you. Kettle shifts his weight relent restlessly. I was about to say re relentlessly, actually. I've had an uneasy feeling all night. Have you seen Skull's Huskals over there in the corner? I've heard stories about them. Nephia seems to be expecting trouble too, so I've decided to go easy on the mead and keep an eye out. I appreciate that. It never hurts to be careful. He throws his head back slightly towards Asleaf. Speaking of which, keep an eye on the big lug back there. He and his friends have been putting their heads together all night. I think he might be planning something. I'll keep an eye on him. Leave the watch to me. This is your feast. You should relax and enjoy yourself. I'll alert you if something happens. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's go and take a seat next to our mother. Following the initial meet and greet, everyone toasts to your father and digs into the meal. Food covers every inch of the table, and the freshly brewed mead seems to flow endlessly. You received mead. Oh, thank you. You're listening to Nephia's usual complaints about her mother when Kettle perks up and slips discreetly out of the longhouse. Outside, some piece of pottery crashes against the ground, and men begin to shout. In short order, the door flies open, and the doorway is filled by Ottar Erlingson, sword in hand. Outside, you see his brothers, standing over the prone form of Kettle. Ottar looks around the room with disgust. What a splendid feast for such a shit thane! Ottar's gaze stops on you. He raises his sword to point at you accusingly. Barney, your family had its chance to earn our respect, and you wasted it. Come outside and defend your honor, or we will burn this hall to the ground. Nephia jumps to her feet, already holding her knife. Her voice seethes with disgust. Otter, you miserable drunkard! How dare you attack your thane's honor during his own feast! Your family will pay for this. Otter has turned his back on you, and is already walking back outside. All the other guests turn their gaze to you in anticipation. Your mother leans in to whisper in your ear. You have to handle this, if the other thanes think we're too weak to deal with such a blow against our family's honor. Yeah, this will not stand. Nephia, are you with me? A shadow sets across Nephia's face. By the gods, he's going to make us kill him this time, isn't he? 
Oh, there we go. Retrieve your weapons from the rack by the door. And we're going to be doing that in the next episode. I thank you very much for watching. And I will see you next time.